Well, as part of Expeditions 22 and 23, T.J. Creamer traveled more than 65 million miles around the planet living and working on board the space station. Well, the past three and a half years, he's traveled a little shorter distance but from his home base in Houston at Johnson Space Center to here in Huntsville to become our Astropod astronaut and a payload operations director leading the ground teams here. Well, part of T.J.'s unique perspective of having been there, done that, really helped to streamline some processes here at the POIC. But as they say, all good things must come to an end and TJ is being reassigned to the Orion program back at Johnson Space Center. But I had a chance to catch up with him and get a few passing thoughts on his last trip here to Huntsville. Tell me what it's been like for you to work in the POIC. So it's been a three and a half year journey. I got to meet wonderful people and we're doing not only the program, the space station programs business, but also the agencies and the countries. If we don't do the research, we're not going to be able to get to go farther. Folks here are trying to do the best job they can to get us to go farther, to get to reap the benefits of the science, not only to get us to go farther, but to help folks on the ground. There isn't much more exciting things to do than that. Is it different than you thought it was going to be? No, ma'am. It's as what I thought. I, my whole life has been real-time ops. Um, so I'm coming here to help out in real-time ops awareness, blending the real-time ops Houston community with the Huntsville real-time ops community, sharing the experiences I had when I was on space station, real-time ops. Um, as a result, no, it wasn't any different than I thought. It, it was as rewarding as, as I had imagined. And for folks who don't know, I mean, there would be tourists come through and you would step out and talk to them. Yes, I mean, why do you do that? Again, it's an excitement thing. I am infected with the excitement of what we're doing both from a space operations world as well as a real-time ops world, also the, from the research world. And doing this kind of science, it helps folks understand when you are that excited what the excitement really is. And to be able to convey that to folks, they then be able to spread that out to their family and friends. And we're just doing a little bit more, winning the, winning the folks over and, and showing them the way forward. What was your favorite experiment or most interesting that you helped with from the ground? Oh, there's a number. So let me put it in, in perspective of what we're trying to do for folks on the ground. We're trying to study very special protein crystals that we know can interfere at the keyhole replication sites for, for breast cancer. So if we're able to help conquer that problem of breast cancer, that's a pretty exciting advent for us. Another help for, for um, humans on the earth is the study of um, Conditions like osteoporosis, everyone's going to suffer osteoporotic conditions. How do we beat that? And so now we're doing dietary experiments that show us ways that we can help forestall that. We're doing exercise programs that are specifically designed to help forestall that. We're doing uh, rodent studies where we're beginning to learn about how those bodies are adapting and how weightlessness or space travel can be affecting folks for space travel, but the same principles apply for folks on the ground. These things being able to give back directly to, to mankind is, is really kind of exciting. What are your thoughts on staying up there for one year? Um, my best answer is on the day we were scheduled to come back for my five and a half month mission, if the ground said we had to stay up there for another four or five months, I would have gone, okay. It is one, it's a wonderful experiment. Experience and experiment. And we're learning from adaptability and recovery and um, the countermeasures to make it a safe a trip for long duration missions, I think it's a pretty good step. What did you enjoy most about the Huntsville community? Oh, the people, my gosh. Oh, I should also say, so I've now been living in Houston since 95, so we've got 20 years there. We've got very springy, hard grass and no hills. Come here, you got very green grass and rolling hills. This is wonderful. And the people. So tell us what you will be doing now. So the actual flying portion of astronauts' career is very minimal. Most of the time, we are engaging with folks to share the excitement, share the wonder. Um, we're doing technical jobs, and for instance, I, I've been working the IT world on space station since the beginning of space station is a technical job. I'm helping out with the Orion landing and recovery um, efforts that are going on now. Orion landing and recovery, where, where are the we at on that? The capsule has to land someplace. We want to land in water. Now, how do you get the crew out? The medical, how do we recover the crew module in an expeditious amount of time? And there's a number of ways of doing this. 
A little different than the way you landed in Russia, right? Just a little bit. That's right. <laughs> we landed on land. We had soft landing thrusters. A misnomer, but it's softer. If they said softer landing thrusters, that's, that's totally true. But and the nice thing about land, though, is they've got lots of land. 14 time zones or something like that. So it's, it's convenient for them to do that.